<laughs> okay. <laughs> G'day. G'day everybody, I'm Matt from Matt Beswick Photography and this is Monique from Diversity Models. We are going to be heavily involved with Miss Photogenic Australia. I'm going to be the official photographer, I was the official photographer last year and we're going to be spending a lot of time together in the coming months for the event. Monique has a special role in Miss Photogenic, I'll let her explain that. With the Miss Photogenic Australia competition, I am going to be headhunting for models, but I'm also going to be one of the judges, and so I can't wait to see the amazing talent that enters the competition. It really is a wonderful weekend, and I love being involved with everything done by Charlie and Morgan, and we've created this resource so that if you're a little bit unsure about how to start, we're going to give you all the building blocks that can let you combine many, many poses that will serve you throughout the pageant. Really looking forward to meeting you and we will see you in July. See you there. Today we're going to show you four different ways to hold your legs. We're going to show you several things to do with your hands. You're going to be able to mix and match these into many, many combinations. And we're going to also mention that you can do all these poses, turning to the side, sometimes turning to the back. But today we're just going to focus on the front so that you can learn the building blocks of how to get started. Before we get into specific advice about posing, I want to talk about practice and confidence. Practice, practice, practice. I want you to practice in front of the mirror. I want you to practice in front of family and friends. It's not enough to just do it in your mind. What you need to do is practice until you don't feel self-conscious about what you're doing. When you are making a mistake, and it's always going to happen, it is not a big deal. I think that Monique will be able to confirm that the most important thing is, is you just smile, you laugh, you move on to the next move, the next pose. We don't want you sitting there thinking, oh no, I didn't have my leg in the right place. Don't worry about it. Keep moving on. It's going to give you the best uh, presentation of yourself and it's going to be the greatest thing for whoever has hired you as a model because you're not spending 10 minutes worrying about one little mistake you did. So I think that's so important and you know what? Let's see what Monique's got to say about the situation. I completely agree with Matthew. Practice makes perfect, as they say. And even if you've been modeling for a few years or you're just a beginner, keep on perfecting your art because at the end of the day, you will become your very best and confidence shines on camera and screen. And the only thing I'd like to add to that is that the people that have got you there to be a model today, they just want you to look and feel like you belong there. And that's going to come from confidence and practice. So now Monique and I are going to do a little bit of the building blocks about what to do with your legs. They're the foundation of your pose and if you get your legs sorted then you can think about everything else. Right, well it's about time for Monique and I to give you some things to actually practice. So what I'd like you to do Monique is just to stand pretty much straight facing the camera for me and having your legs just shoulder length apart. Now look, Monique looks great, but there's not a great deal going on and there's not really much attitude, interest and shape. So we need to change that. So one of the first things we're going to do is I'm going to ask Monique to put her weight into one of her legs. So I'll do that. Can you do that as well, Monique? So you see that she's popped her hip out or put her weight into one leg. In this video, I'm going to refer to that as the weighted leg and this as the free leg. Now, Monique, I think you'll find that you're able to lift up your free leg. Be yeah, see, all the weight is in her weighted leg. And so you should have that freedom and that ability to pose with that leg. So that's our very first one. And this might sound obvious, but I want to point out, you can use the other hip. Would you like to pop over the other? Yep, you're, you might have a favorite, but it's good to be able to do both. So now that we've got the uh, weight into one hip, what, what are we going to do with our free leg? So at the most basic level, Monique's already doing it. Monique could also point that leg at 45 degrees. Oh, you skipped ahead, but let's, play, let's work with that, Monique. Pop that back out in front. So what you'll see here, I'll get you to take that a little bit more across. There you go. Look, we've just gone through two different options. We can see here on our video that Monique has a lovely shape where it joins uh, at her knees. We call this a vanishing point and it makes her bottom half 
look a bit like the stem of a wine glass and it's a beautiful shape and also sometimes a photographer might choose to finish the photo there and it looks great. So that's what we would refer to as having her free leg across. So I don't do it as well as Monique, but that's okay. So Monique, what I'd like you to do is have that more directly in front. Can you see how my leg, yeah. So now you might've seen a little wobble there from Monique and that's fine. I do wanna point out, you can turn your rear leg just that little bit to give yourself a bit of balance. Does that help Monique? Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. much more support. We don't want you falling over, but we've got the same concept. We've got this vanishing point where we've got the beautiful shape from Monique's hips running down to her knees and around about where her ankle is, we've got a lovely narrowing point, also called a vanishing point. So we've got across and we've got in front. So what I'd like to do is, let's just go back to when you had your feet on either side, still have your weight in one of your hips. And I was just pointing out that the free leg can turn 45 degrees, can turn 90 degrees, and don't forget to point your leg. So we've got shape there. That's three options we've already got. Oh, Monique's getting ahead of us. <laughs> Monique is getting ahead of herself and that's great. She knows what she's doing. So that was actually Monique showing us one of our next options. So I want you to go back to flat footed, weight in one hip. Now lift up that heel on the free leg. Yep, so you're pointing your toe. Now I want you to point your free knee across your body. Now, it doesn't look as great on me. I'm going to stop making those jokes. But you can see with Monique, she's again creating another vanishing point. At her knees, the vision is joining, which makes a wonderful silhouette with her lovely black dress on the white background. And it's also another spot where photographers may like to uh, make a cropping point for that photo. And she looks fantastic. <laughs> so what we might do is we might just pause there for a moment. So I do want to mention one more thing about legs. It would be easy for me to spend half an hour just talking about legs, isn't that right, Monique? <laughs> but we want to make this a video that you can finish in less time than it takes to watch the Titanic movie. So I'm going to mention one more thing. At the beginning, I mentioned that we're doing all our posing to the front. We're not covering posing to the side and all those other things. But I do want to mention one thing about posing to the side. So Monique, could you turn towards me, perhaps? Yeah, just, there we go. Now, I want you to put your weight into one hip. Okay, so what Megnique's done is she's chosen to put her weight into the hip that is closest to the camera. It makes that look a little bit bigger. It's got, uh, it's, it's an activated muscle. It looks a bit stronger. And that's okay if you're looking for strength or to make something accentuate. But what I'd like Monique to do is to pop her weight into the other side. And now you'll see quite a difference in a silhouette. We've got quite a change, we can see lovely curves, and also the leg that's closest to camera is now curvy, wonderful, and not being artificially made bigger by being closer to the camera or being activated because all those strengths in it. So that's what I wanted to cover. I'm not gonna really speak much more about facing to the side and things like that. Have a think about that. We're doing that because we're portraying a stereotypical version of beauty, which is assuming that you want to slim certain areas, that you want to have natural curves. We're not going for projecting a lot of strength. There's nothing wrong with projecting strength. We're just focusing on um, a more traditional feminine view of beauty. So let's focus on your, on your upper body. One of the most important things to begin with is your posture. Ideally, you don't want to slouch. So, Monique and I are just gonna try and relax a little bit, let our shoulders hang down. And that's, that's pretty basic, but it's quite important. Some of you might see in certain types of editorial models where models might you know, slouch with their arms and all these sorts of things that I don't look good doing. Don't be fooled into thinking that they're having too relaxed a posture or slouching on, they're doing it on purpose and it's a great look, but we're not commenting or teaching that right now. So, with our posture, what I'd suggest to help you avoid slouching is just to have your shoulders back a little bit and put a little bit of curve in your back. I might ask Monique to turn to the side, face me or the other way, and just, so you just flat, and then just put that little bit of curve in your back, so it's, gonna, it's going to bring your shoulders back a little bit, pop your bottom out just that tiny bit, we're not looking for big booty poses. <laughs> well, we're not, we're just looking for basic feminine beauty. And 
it's going to help you with that posture. Can you feel the difference? Definitely. Go back to the... Yep, beautiful. No, you're doing it so well. Now, sometimes in a shoot, you will forget about your posture. When I'm doing a shoot with someone, and just relax your posture, because I'm going to see if it works on you. When I'm doing a shoot and someone is perhaps slouching a little bit and they're getting a little bit too relaxed with their posture, I like to say, quick, the teacher's coming. <laughs> so whatever works for you, whatever works for your photographer, but it's my little tip because everyone I have ever worked with, when I say that, they bring their posture back in like, oh, teacher's coming. So I want to say a little bit about shoulders as well. So Monique, could you pop your weight into one of your hips? Now, you've got your weight on the hip closest to me. What I'd like you to do is to drop the shoulder on the same side. So what we're seeing here is we're offering a fantastic curve here on this side. Even, Monique, if you could just drop your hand down a little bit so we can see that curve a bit better. Yep. So now if you were to bring your shoulders up straight again, see, we've lost that curve. So I just want to note that that's a really great option. So the side that the weight is in, you can drop that shoulder a little bit and it'll look really good. Now, one of the big things about, rule, about rules in general, but specifically about shoulders, is I want you to feel some freedom to move them around. You can have one shoulder forward, one shoulder back. You can have one shoulder up, one shoulder down. Play with all those options. In fact, it's one of the ways that you can take the poses we're gonna show you into hundreds and hundreds of poses by using mild variations with your shoulders, etc. So that's, that can actually be one of the really powerful tools that a good model will have at their disposal. And I know for sure that Monique knows this and that's something for you to play around with. I'm not gonna teach every little bit about shoulder because Monique, Monique and I have been saying this all day, we could spend an hour on shoulders, an hour on hands, an hour on, but we're not doing that today. So that's what I wanted to say about shoulders. And we're gonna cover a little bit about the number one thing I hear from new models what do I do with my hands? It's a classic, isn't it, Monique? No, always, always. <laughs> okay, we're going to cover a few options. We're going to talk about specific places where you can put your hands and some general concepts about what to do with your hands. What's the classic that everyone does if they don't know what to do? Hands on their hips. Okay, I'm just going to comment that I'm going to be instructing what to do with one hand. You can do the same thing with the other hand, you can do other things with your hands. So all these things that we're going to teach, that's one thing, that's another, that's another, they all build together. It's all what we've been talking about. We give you some building blocks and you have so many options. So we've got the hand on the hip. Really, really good. Monique has chosen to do a classic two hands on her hips and in fact her hands are coming forward and they look almost like a cinch belt. And some of you that pay attention to fashion will know that that can be a nice narrowing point and it makes an already wonderful figure look that little bit like a shorter, smaller waist. Not that Monique needs it, and, but she knows it, she loves it. It's a great pose. It's wonderful for curvy women, but is certainly available to everybody to use. You'll notice that in this case, Monique's got her thumb behind her waist and that's great. But let's just drop back to one hand on the hip. Yep, we're just looking at that because I'm going to rely on you to put the pieces together yourself later. So also, Monique, what I'd like you to do is bring the hand that you've got on your hip. We're just leaving the other hand alone. The hand on your hip, bring it up to your collarbone. Okay, Monique's already doing some of the nice things I'm going to mention later with soft hands, not like planting a claw there. Um, but she's got a hand to a collarbone. Now what I'd like you to do is bring your hand to your chin. Now, milk it... Milk. Monique has gone up to her jawline, which is a really good option. And she's going to the chin. She can also turn it over like that. I'm going to get into the specifics a little bit later. But what I want you to think of is hand on the hip, hand on the collarbone, hand on the chin. Now, you also can go to the side of your face, which is kind of what Monique was doing before. If you'd like to pop that up to the side of your face. And that's already a few options. Now. Monique's been doing what I asked. She has kept her hand to the same side of her body. Monique, could you put your hand over to the collarbone on the other side of your body? Well, so what you've done is you've brought up the other hand. I'd like you to pop that one back down. This hand, you, yeah. So we're just showing that while I've said collarbone, there's two options there. Let's go same hand up to the chin or on the face on the other side of your body. So you can frame like this. Or you can frame like that. 
you'll learn to develop those specifics, but I'm just showing you one, two, three, four, and then you can do it all again on the other side of the body. And remember, Monique's got two hands, so we can mix and match that. So let's do a little bit of freestyling. I'll let, I'm putting Monique on the spot. We didn't prepare this at all. So let's do three different combinations of hands in different places. Classic. Yep, beautiful. Lovely. I've realized there's one I didn't mention. Let your hands drop down to the side. Both hands, please. Now, let, it, let them even like come to the side of your body because Monique's on autopilot is a great model. <laughs> so let's just pretend you don't know what you're doing. Even if you don't know what you're doing, reach a little bit past where your hand naturally falls and then bring it up. And watch what happens with Monique. We have got this lovely spot here. So just go back down again, Monique. So you can see a hint of her waist. Bring that up. And now we've got what we call in the industry negative space. It just means that we can see the lovely curve on that side. Could you do the same on this side? Yep. And I, I will just want to do one more thing. Just pop back down again and just see how little you need to move just to get a little bit of negative space. Yep. That's enough. So let's stick one hand like that and put another hand up to your collarbone. There you go. That's wonderful. We've got so many options already. While we're doing this with our hands, our hands really draw the attention of the viewer and they are a great opportunity to reach for details of your dress, reach for earrings, a necklace, or your hair. Yep. Now, Monique is doing a great job. She's done this a hundred times before and it's really, really good. I'm now gonna mention some general concepts about how to use your hands. So we've said where to put them. You've got those locked in. Or you can always go back and watch many times as you need. And anyway, what we're gonna do is two things about that. One of them is a concept I call trace, don't place. So if I want you or the photographer wants you to put your hand to the side of your face, when you're experienced, you can do that really, really well. But when you're beginning, and maybe even for experienced people, go past where you want and then just gently bring it down. So you're just gently tracing. And what's gonna happen is you're naturally gonna have a softer hand. You're not gonna have like a claw or a fist. You just, so you're just having your fingertips gently trace and just sort of stop where you need to be. Some photographers might even want to actually just get you to do the motion and not even ask you to stop. They'll just shoot as you do this. But it certainly creates Soft hands. Soft hands is our next topic. Monique, a great shot can be spoiled by some tense fists. We want, we're going for feminine beauty, tense fists, or even just tense hands in general, or even really big hands. So I'll do it, Monique will do it. So just put your hand up to the side of your face, and now turn your hand so you see the whole hand. Now, maybe if you've got a diamond ring here that you wanna show off, that might be a great pose. But most of the time, that's actually going to dominate the face. So you can see that that draws a lot of attention to Monique's face. And, sorry, to Monique's hand. So could you turn side on like you were before? Look at that. We're now back on track and paying attention to Monique's face. So we do that by turning our hand on the side compared to front on. Like with all rules, they don't have to always be followed. It's just a good guideline. So for example, if you're actually on the body, it's not as important because it's not creating um, a huge size where there wasn't already size. But next to the face where there's nothing there, it's suddenly so much bigger and much more dominant. So just think about that. Soft hands, trace, don't place, and turn your hands onto the side is usually your best option. Okay. So, we've been talking about a lot of things to do with your pose. So we're just gonna cover a little bit about your head, face, and eyes, so that it doesn't become overwhelming for you. Remember, our focus is for this to be an introduction and some building blocks. So, with your head, I'm talking more about, and Monique knows all about this, about you can turn a little bit to the left, a little bit to the right. You can also chin up a bit chin down a bit, and also you can have some head tilt and you can combine all of those together. 
It's actually really a superpower to be able to combine them, but they're like the extra source once you've got the basics done. Would you agree with that, Monique? Mm-hmm, 100%. Yeah, so you can be in a pose where your body and your head is very much the same, slight changes with your shoulders, and your head can suddenly turn it into an infinite number of extra poses. You're really gonna give value to your customers when you are working as a professional model. Photographers love taking their photos and every little bit helps. So that's what I'm gonna leave it with, with respect to where to pose your head. So I do wanna speak a little bit about eyes. Eyes are the windows to our souls and I think you, what would you, how important do you think eyes are, Monique? I think it's most important, especially in showing your emotions. And one trick that I've always been talking about is smile with your eyes to the camera. And I agree with that. And it can be confusing to know how to put that into practice. So one of the tips that I often teach new models and even experienced models is about what you're thinking. It's very hard to be conscious of what your eye muscles are doing. So I like to ask people to think about something that is wonderful to them, something that brings joy to their heart, and that will actually show in their eyes. So some of my standards is to say, are you a dog person or a cat person? Now, it's not so much that question that gets them, but then they start thinking about their beloved dog or their cat, or I'll say, how is, uh, how's, how's Rusty the dog gonna be when you get home today? <laughs> He'll be impressed. <laughs> instant smile, but it's not so much about the smile, it's the eyes. So you can smile with your eyes, Monique was 100% right, but be thinking about those things. If you're not thinking about anything, that's gonna show in the photo. So it's hard to do, but you can practice it by thinking about things. Your photographer will hopefully give you some suggestions to think about positive things, and that's really gonna come through your eyes. It's not really much more I can say specifically about that, but think happy thoughts. It's up to you what that happy thought is, and you don't even have to tell anyone. So I do want to mention another thing about eyes. We prefer if you don't look to the very extremes. Now, we don't have the, the capacity to zoom in, or maybe I'll work out how to do it in editing, but when you look all the way to the left, so your head is still straight, you look all the way to the left, or all the way to the right, all the way up and all the way down, you probably feel a little bit of tension in your eyes. One, we don't want that little bit of tension in your eyes, but also when you're doing that, so let's pretend that I'm looking straight at you and I'm looking across at Monique with my eyes, but my face is still forward. You can see massive whites of my eyes. They're not particularly attractive and remembering that we're going for feminine beauty we don't want those massive eyes. They can make you look a little bit shifty, a little bit uncomfortable, a little bit suspicious, and it can take away from an otherwise great uh, pose. So what do I suggest you do do? If I want to look at Monique, my body and or my head is going to turn part of the way, and then my eyes turn the rest of the way. So Monique, have a look at me. Can you see massive whites of my eyes? No, it's well okay. balanced. Well balanced. But if I was to keep my attitude of my body to the camera. Now look at you, Monique. You look a little bit suspicious. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't trust this. We don't me. want that. <laughs> so don't look far enough that your eyes feel awkward and just turn with your shoulders and your head most of the way and finish the job with your eyes. So that's what I wanted to say about eyes. And I do trust Matthew Beswick. <laughs> 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 yes, I look suspicious. Okay. <laughs> Excellent. Right, so we've given you so many elements to work with, things to do with your hands, things to think about with your upper body, your face, your eyes. It can still feel quite daunting. But if you were to do the maths, we've probably shown you at most 20 things, I think. I didn't do the maths. You can write that down in the comments. Um, but what we're gonna do now is we're gonna do a bit of a rapid summary. So we're gonna work our way from the bottom up and then we're going to do some combinations to show that uh, Monique has learnt from what we're doing and to demonstrate how you can practice this yourself at home. So let's start with your stance, Monique. So could you just be sort of flat-footed? Yep, beautiful. So we've, you may recall that our options with our legs. Weight in one hip, please. Great. Now with your free leg, which is the leg closest to me at the moment, 
turn it out to 45 degrees, turn it out to 90 degrees, point your toe. Great. We're calling that one option, but if you think about it, that's three options we're giving you. So now what I'd like you to do, Monique, yep, so weight in one hip, and I'd like you to go up on a point and bring your knee across in line with the other knee. Yep, beautiful, we've got that narrowing pose. Okay, so now you can lift that leg and go past, almost like half of a step. Again, beautiful narrowing point. Now I'd like you to bring that free leg in front, keeping the weight on the back leg. Turn your back leg a little bit if you need to. Monique's got, done it beautifully. Okay, so we've done four, possibly more, options with our legs. Let's move on to our hands. So Monique, could you just balance yourself back in the centre, weight in one hip, and just do something that you can be comfortable with with your legs. Yep, that's great. So now we're going to look at our hands. Let's start with the hands being down low. So Monique is automatically in the modelling mode, but let's let those hands go. Yep. So first thing is tracing your hands up a little bit to give that little... Yep. You can go as far as you like. You can go a big here or just a little bit there to create... So go a little bit further down. So we're just having that little bit of negative space here. So just take your hand down further. Beautiful. Okay. Hands on hips. That's where Monique was coming up to. So, and of course, you can mix and match these across both. Okay, but I said rapid fire, so let's get into it. Hands up in a higher location. So, pick a hand, and sticking on the same side, I'd like you to come up to your collarbone, to your chin, side of your face, and to your shoulder. Yep, beautiful. Now, combine that with jewellery or interesting things, or your hair. So, let's go for your hair, beautiful, and trace, don't place. So go up high with your hair and just bring it down. Beautiful. Yep. Beautiful. Now, do the same thing, but take your hand across to the other side of your body. So you can go across to your shoulder on the other side. So what I'm actually asking for... Ah, yes. Beautiful, Monique. See? So, and now to your collarbone. Very close to your shoulder. That could be really bringing beautiful attention to some jewellery or something. Chin. Yep. And side of your face. Yep. Beautiful. So we've got all those options. Now, you can also go to the top of your head, side of your head, and back of your head. Yep. Beautiful. We've got so many options to play with, and Monique is going through them beautifully and nice and rapidly. Then, what did we talk about next? We talked about your head, face, and eyes. So, head, you've got tilting left and right, chin up and down, and then actually tilting to the side, and mixing it all up. So, you've got all those wonderful options. I forgot all about shoulders, Monique. We can have one down, the other one down, forward, backward, nice and loose. All these options multiply the poses that you can do into hundreds and hundreds. Monique's doing perfectly here. So back to the face and eyes, etc. I spoke about eyes for a little bit. Think happy thoughts. That's all I really need to say. It'll come through in your eyes. With your eyes, don't turn your eyes all the way to the sides, top or bottom. Turn part way with your eyes, part way with your shoulders, part way with your neck, just so that we don't show off those suspicious looking eyes. <laughs> okay, I think that we have done our brilliant rapid fire. All that's left to do is to mix and match and combine these. So we haven't rehearsed this. I'm now putting Monique on the spot to show off some of what she's learned. So what I'd like you to do, Monique, is pick one of the leg options we've got. Great. Okay. So we've done that. So with your hand closest to me, pick one of the hand options. With your other hand, pick a different option. Look at that. How good does Monique look? All she's doing is combining the building blocks we've got. I hope she's thinking happy thoughts. Maybe she's thinking about relaxing in the spa tonight after she's finished all this hard work. Not that it's work, it's so fun to work with Monique. It is. <laughs> <laughs> and we've already got all this posing. She's got wiggle room with her shoulders and her head position. And this is all wonderful things. I'm going to challenge you to go to a different foot position. So let's break, break it all down. Yep. I want you weight in the opposite hip. I'm th throwing it out and making it harder for you. So weight in the opposite hip. What are you going to do with your hands? Pick one hand. Beautiful. There's nothing wrong with that. Let's do the other one. Two hands on hips. Beautiful. Looks fantastic. Monique already doing great. But I'm going to throw one in for you. I'd like you to bring one of those hands up. Trace don't place your hair. Yep. Finishing up on the chin with soft hands and hand on the side. Look, there's got to be another way to do the legs we haven't done yet, Monique. Beautiful. 
Okay. And do you know what? Monique's really shown us something. You can leave everything you're doing up here alone and just change the legs. Keep this the same. Give me another leg option, please. I hope it doesn't sound like I'm too demanding. I know Monique can handle it. Okay, so we've actually stuck to the top for half and switched it up down the bottom half. So I'd like you to keep the bottom half the same. I'd like one of your hands behind your head and the other one on your chin. Look, you want to... Monique's doing it great. There's so many options. And I just really want to show that you can mix and match and just change one thing at a time and you'll find yourself building these blocks for yourself into many, many poses. You can relax now, Monique. <laughs> Thank you. I'm glad I didn't have to do Monique's job. So where do you go from here? What would you say, Monique? I would say practice makes perfect. Keep on perfecting your art and keep on building your confidence as you're gonna get better and better every day. The more that you mix those combinations, take these fantastic tips from Matthew today. You are a legend, <laughs> photographer, and also teacher of this trade, so yes. I agree 100%, and I just wanna harp on one point that I made earlier, don't just practice in your head. I have models of all different levels of skill come to me, and they tell me they've watched all the YouTube videos. It's great. I did a lot of my learning for, to for photography. I hope I didn't ruin the audio. I've done a lot of learning from my photography by YouTube and doing it. And I would ask that you do the same, YouTube and do it. There is also room for you to learn through professional sources, which could be uh, a modeling agency, some instruction from someone like me, or even online courses. YouTube, do it. That's the main thing. Mm -hmm. And keep on doing it until you feel relaxed about it and it ain't no thing. I know, I, you're allowed to laugh at me. I'm not an <laughs> urban young person. So just do it until it feels natural and it really, really, really will become second nature. And hopefully we'll see you out and about in the industry mm -hmm. and um, you're going to do great. Thank you so much for taking the time to spend with Monique and myself and you'll find our information in the description for the video and don't hesitate to reach out to us and ask us questions or let us know if there's any particular videos you think you'd like to see coming up. Thanks so much everyone and good luck in your modelling career. Thank you for making it this far through our video. Monique and I have enjoyed showing you what we've got to teach and we're looking forward to seeing the results of you practising, practising, practising when you are at Miss Photogenic in July. You'll have Monique as a judge, me as official photographer. We really look forward to seeing it. Absolutely, we are so excited to see you absolutely flourish on stage. So good luck in the Miss Photogenic Australia pageant. And by the way, hi Charlie and Morgan. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you for having us. <laughs> thank you. Okay, cheerio.